Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to do is continue on with this uh, desk lamp project and what we're going to be doing is the equivalent of the output 4 and the output 7 on the Leaving Cert DCG project. So at this stage uh, from the previous videos we have built our lamp now at this stage, we've applied appearances and in the previous video what we actually did was we created a folder, so I'll go to my desktop screen here, we created a folder and if I just open up that folder uh, we have the main desk lamp project, which is what we have built using the multi-body approach. We exported out all the individual parts then, okay, um, into individual part files, the switch, the light bulb, uh, the gooseneck and plug and so forth, the lamp base. And um, then after that, what we did was we created an assembly and we created an exploded view. Now, by doing all those things, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a drawing sheet, okay, which is, the, is what happens when you make the output 4 and output 7. So, first of all, you do need a drawing sheet. So I have one pre-made, and if you refer to another video on my DCG playlist on my YouTube channel, you'll be able to find how to do that. But I'm just going to open up that one there now. So if I click open, I have the DCG sheet template done here. Okay, and there is an A3 sheet with a couple of um, little details in here. So before I bring anything in, I'm actually going to show you how to, um, I suppose, bring in an image there if you want it and um, add some details in here. Now this kind of sheet template, this is kind of locked in position. I can't edit anything to do with the border or this just yet. The only way I could do that is, you can see up here, uh, you have these different types of tabs now. You have drawing, annotation, sketch, markup, evaluate, add-ins, and you have sheet format. If I want to add something in down here, let's say I want to go to sheet format, I click on this and I click edit sheet format. Now. What I can do is over here, I can change some of these details now. So for name, or let's say that was exam number, for name, I'm just gonna try it in. So you could obviously change that to exam number, but I'm just gonna type in name there. So you click on it, and you would type in name. Okay, measurements in millimeters, and then today's date is the 7th of the 3rd. So obviously whatever date you're working on it, you would say 7 of the 3rd, 24. Okay, and if you want it to be a little bit, you can even pull it in there into the middle. You can even move measurements in millimeters into the middle as well, and then maybe that there as well. Now, if I want to add in something in here as well, in this little section, I can go to Annotation and click on Notes. Now, in the Notes section here, what I'm going to title it is DCG Desk, sorry, desk Lamp Project. Okay, I can highlight all the text. I can increase the font size up to about 18. See, that probably looks a little bit better. Now, this will often come in if you press the escape key. That will get rid of that. And I can click and grab this and probably pull it there more into the middle. Okay, so you can see that area is getting more populated now. Now I want to add in a little image inside here. Okay, to exit the sheet format, I'm going to do that now because I'll add in the image separately. Okay, so I'm going to exit sheet format. So click on this little tool, which is like exit sketch. Okay, and now technically, if I go to click on any of these things, you can see here, if I'm clicking away, I can't edit them. The only way I can change those is by going into sheet format, edit sheet format. Now, I want to put in an image in there. So to put an image in there, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find um, the school logo. And I'll say crest. Hopefully I can find something there. Go to images. Okay, there's the crest. Now, easy thing for me. I want one if I can just get the background. I might actually go to the website. That's great. Apologies. Wrong school. Retro secondary school. I'll change this to Kenny. Okay, and go to the website. Let's see if I can just take one from the website. Put one down here. Hmm. I'll just there now. Just have to search a little bit harder. That's the one I kind of want. If I click into that maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there's the crest. That's the kind of crest I want. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to and get my snipping tool. So click on the search bar, type in snip, click on this. And I'm going to click on, just make sure I'm selected on the rectangle yet, click on new. And I'm going to snip that out. Try to make sure that we have it equally spaced. 
and then all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to right click on it and click on save as I'm going to save it just to my desktop screen and I'm just going to say um, Loretto Crest and click save okay close that down back into SolidWorks now at this point okay at this point here um, you could, uh, sorry, I, what, what I could do with the crest is, and you'll see in a second, so to bring in the crest and to bring in that, I'm going to click on insert and I'm going to go down here to picture. Okay, nice and easy. There's the Loretta crest. Click on that, click open, and it should come in there. Now it's a little bit pixelated, but I'm going to scale it down a little bit and come to a little bit more focus. Now, you can see there, it's a little bit better. Now, at this point, you could do this. You can see there it's kind of coming in with the white background. I'm just going to scale it in there, put it inside the box. Okay. Now, when the sheet prints white, don't worry about that. It should come out absolutely fine. Okay. Now, if there was kind of a gray or background there, you could bring that into kind of a remove background editor with just the crest then, and that would be absolutely fine as well. That's a way, a handy way of bringing in an image. Okay. And just make sure you can see there by zooming in, I can see that it's all contained within my uh, lines. Okay. That's a way to bring in an image. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in uh, the orthographic views of our desk lamp. So to bring in the orthographic views, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to drawing. Okay, I'll actually close down. I have a desk lamp, this guy open. I'm going to close this one down. So I don't need that open. Now in the drawing, okay, I'm going to select drawing up here. Click on drawing and I'm going to click on model view. And what it's going to ask me to do then is I'm going to search for my part. So I have to click on browse. I'm going to navigate to my folder, it's on my desktop screen, click on the lamp, and the one I want to bring in here, now I'm actually going to bring in not the desk lamp project, I'm going to bring in the assembly version, okay, multiple parts, so I'm going to, and there's a reason I'm going to do that, and you'll see later on, so I'm going to use the assembly version, and click open, and what you'll see then is, I'm going to click on this, you'll see about here, there's our elevation, and if I just move to the right, that will give us our end elevation, one end elevation. If I move to the left, it'll give me a different version. And then if I move down, it'll give me the plan. Okay, if I move up, it'll give me the underside of it. And then I can get different views. Then I can get isometric views by going off to the left, click, go off to the right, click. I could even get one down here, but I don't think that one is as appropriate, but it probably shows you a little bit of detail in regards to the bulb. Okay, but to deactivate the tool, press escape. Now, there's more views there than I need, but what you can do is everything is kind of independently linked to the elevation here. You can see all these guys. Now, these guys here, if you click on the corner and hold, you can pull them out here for a second. I'm not sure which one I want to use. Now, in regards to these ones, I have to decide which end elevation I want. Do I want this one or do I want this one? The one I actually probably want is this one here because I think it shows more detail in regards to the plug. Whereas this one over here, the plug is kind of hidden behind. So I'm going to click on any part of the orange box, click, then click delete on your keyboard and click yes, that will go. Now, based on these guys here, um, just look in here, I'm going to put this guy up into here to the right hand corner because this end elevation is going to the left. I want it about there. Okay. And then I've got the plan view here. So that's where I'm going to position those. Now, the other one that I'm going to use then is... I'm going to use this one here. That's my isometric. I'm going to click on this guy and click delete. Okay. And there we have it. There's my multiple views that I'm going to use in um, this drawing sheet here. Okay. For some reason that's after way out of sync. So I'll double click that. I don't know how that happened. I exactly moved that by accident. Put that back in. Sorry there. I double clicked on the image. It becomes reactivated. Click and narrow. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to scale these up. So, in normal orthographic drawings, the elevation, end elevation plan, all we're going to do is we're going to increase the size. So, I want them to be a little bit bigger. So, if I click on the elevation view, which is this one here, click on it, a window will become active here. Now, the only things you really need to focus on here is the display style box and the scale. So, first of all, display style. The one it's currently selected on is the line. You can click on this one here. And when I select that, what you'll notice is everything here is actually showing hidden detail. And that's possibly the one that you usually want. You always usually want to show hidden detail. If you click on this one, it will show color. And then that's realistic colors without edges. That's just the line diagram. 
and this is the line diagram with hidden details. So I'm going to click on that, but notice how they've all changed to that. Now these three will be linked together and I want them. This one in a minute, we're going to change it to the color. So I'm going to click on that. Next thing I'm going to change then is the scale. So it says here, you can see here on the left hand side, now they are after getting smaller there, click on that. It's gone to one is to 10. I'm going to change that to maybe one is to four. Press enter. Okay, size is a bit better. I'm gonna go maybe one is to three, see what the difference is. And based on the size of that, maybe I might try 3.5. Okay, I think that's possibly okay. Now with 3.5, you can see here now, I pull this guy down, that's the plan view. Bit tight there, I might even go 3.25 actually. Maybe, sorry, 3.75. Based on my scale, obviously depending on what you made, you'll have to come up with your own scale. No, I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks okay. Okay, so there we have the elevation, end elevation, and plan done. Now we're gonna work onto this guy, the pictorial view. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase this guy and I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. So click on this guy. And what I'm gonna do is over here in the scale section, well, first of all, display style, I'm gonna click onto the color image. And just realize, possibly wanted the other one maybe, depending if it shows me the light. It doesn't actually show me the light. I might get a different view in a while, you'll see, okay? So click on this guy. I'm after going into the color image. Now I have two display styles. I'm gonna put on the uh, shaded width edges. And I'm not going to use parent scale. I'm going to use a custom scale. So in the scale, click on custom. And I'm going to increase the size of it. I'm gonna to go to one is to three. I think I'm going to even go a little bit bigger. I might go one is to 2.5. There we go. Okay, I want to show that a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm going to put it over here. I might even put it into the corner. All right. So there we have the um, uh, pictorial view. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to put in uh, some annotations. So if I click on annotation, click on note, I'm going to come over here underneath the elevation. I might actually put it on top of it, put it here. I'm going to type in then, caps lock on, elevation. Okay, straight away, click somewhere else on your screen. Here is the end elevation, click again. Now I'm just reusing, there we go, end elevation. You can see it's prompting me straight away to put something in. And then down here, I'm going to click on, make sure the arrow is in selected tantrum. And I'm going to click again and just rename that to plan. Okay, click to accept. And then over here, I'm going to click on down here, and I'm going to rename it as Pictorial, which is 3D View. Okay, so there we have our views labeled. Press Escape then to deactivate the tool, and it will stop you naming things. Elevation, end elevation plan. I can re I can move these about as much as I want. Click and hold, and you can move them about. Now, the next thing I'm going to do with though with that is I want another view. I'm actually going to put in a section view. Okay, really handy tool. And I'm going to put in the section view in, in relation to the elevation. And you'll see here, I'll probably end up pulling it out to the right and I'll move these guys. So to do that, what we want to do is we want to go to the drawing tab again. And we're going to go to section view. Now a section view is like when we chop something down the middle, okay, or at a certain point. I'm going to click on the section view here. And the one I want to select is this one, the vertical one here, not the horizontal, okay not the angle okay or this one here i'm just going to click on this one and that's the one that's currently active so that's fine now you can see a line will come in here i don't want to section my end elevation it doesn't really make sense the one i want to section actually is my elevation one so i want it to be right in the middle so you can see i'm zooming in i'm going to get it roughly right in the middle up to the top here now i think that there you go you can see i can map onto the point there click and then simply to accept this click the green arrow click okay Auto hatching is on, and there we go. And what it's doing is it's showing the detail inside, right down the middle. Now you can see I'm after bringing a section out here. I'm just thinking, based on that drawing, yeah, I think I'll actually, rather than pulling it to the left, I will actually pull it over here. I think that's actually appropriate. Okay, the way it's after coming in. And you can see it comes in with a label as well, section AA, and that is named because obviously our AA is up here. Now, based on my drawing, you can see the AA is after coming in in such a way. I'm just looking here. I might actually reorder this sheet, and this is quite a handy thing to do just to explain. So uh, I'm going to bring this down a bit further. So I'm going to pull out my pictorial view, click and grab it. And I'm actually just going to move all these to the left. So there's my section view. There's my end elevation. 
there is a plan. Now, I want the reason I will pull it down is because I don't want this going up into the border, this part here. So all I'm going to do, just rotate in and out, pull this down, and now I'm going to pull my plan down. I think that is appropriately spaced there. I'm going to re put this up here. I'm going to put the end elevation up here. I think the section is nice in there, so that's absolutely fine. You could move it up there if you want. Okay, but I'm just going to leave it in there. And then the pictorial, now I'm going to pull this over here into this space. Maybe put that guy inside there. Okay, now there we have it. We've now done an elevation, our end elevation. We've got our plan view. Pull this down here a little bit, right underneath it. Okay, and um, we've got our pictorial view as well with our section. And the section is referenced off this guy here, off the elevation, pulled it to the left, and it's showing, you can see there, the detail on the inside, the bulb, uh, we've got the lampshade, we've got the gooseneck, and we've got obviously a little bit of the wire, we've got the switch and so forth as well, and the base. Okay, and it's shown where all those pieces are kind of stuck together, okay, which is a really handy um, tool. Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to put in some annotations. So to put in annotations, if I click on annotation, I'm going to click on smart dimension. Now I want to start dimensioning my objects, okay, letting the examiner know a little bit of information. So with my smart dimension tool, if I come down here, watch, click on the circle, there we go, saying 144, you can have it going this way. I'm going to do it like this. Then I'm going to click on the next one inside it. Do the exact same thing. 40. And then this one inside it here. Now, this one is interesting, just to show you that one. 136.83. So I'm going to pull that one and I'm going to go trying to get the. There we go. I'll go up to here. All right. Now, I don't like the fact that that's in 136.83. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that. So to change that, just click on it. Now it's currently active. So if I press escape, if I click on it, you'll see a box will open up here. And what it's going to ask me to do then is if I want to change the value of it, okay, first of all, tolerance precision, I don't want two decimal places. So here I'm going to click on this. I'm going to change that to no decimal place. And you'll see then it will automatically okay it will automatically just um go up in value or down in value depending on how high the decimal point was and click on the green arrow to accept okay and i think that personally just looks a little bit neater okay now i'm going to continue with my annotations so i'm going to put in go up to my elevation here i'm going to put in some heights so i'm going to start with the height here of this little section click on this guy click on this guy click and click you can grab there's 10 i might pull it this way if I want the overall height, now sometimes the overall height can be hard to grab here because you can see there is uh, no point up there. So sometimes you can put in a point to reference it off. If you click annotation, or sorry, click on sketch and click on point, I'm put in a point right there. So you can see I'm going to put a point right at the top. Now to do the overall height, I'm going to click annotation, smart dimension. Usually you can click on the point there. I no, don't want that. Maybe. I might be struggling to grab this one here. Might have to do it off the other view. Yeah, I may have to do this off the other view, guys. Apologies. So I'm actually going to control Z, undo that point. Now I might actually try and do it here instead. So annotation, sorry, sketch, point. Hopefully try and select the topmost point of it. It looks about there. So you can see I'm after putting a little point there. Now we'll go annotation and smart dimension. Click on the point. Click on the base on here. And there we go. We can get the overall height. I can pull the overall height maybe in here. I'll pull it out to the left actually. Now once again, I'm going to override that value. I'm, or sorry, not override the value. Accept that. But then I'm going to click in tolerance. Change this to none. And you can see there it's saying 443. Pull it into the middle. And there we go. It's after giving me the overall height. So I want the overall height. I've kind of got the overall uh, circumference there of the base, or sorry, the, the overall diameter. And uh, that kind of gives me, I suppose, the width. And now I'm going to put start putting in some other additional dimensions, okay, to give me a little bit of information about the object. So maybe for the plug here, I want this down to here, click between the two. That's saying 22.5. So I want that, once again, I'm just going to take off the tolerance Click none, 23, okay, um, I want the heights of the prongs, click, click, 
that's saying 17 the inside of there I put it on the outside I put the 23 on the outside as well okay we got the height of the prongs uh, if you wanted you could put in a little chamfer angle click click now a bit awkward there there's probably no need to do that but that's how you do it okay maybe I want the width of it click on this guy click on this guy 47.8 so I'm going to tolerance precision change that to none 48 okay come down here and maybe I want the click on this click on this 50 perfect happy with that okay you could maybe do the angle if you clicked on this point at this point you get a little angle inside there I think that looks a little bit messy so I'm not going to put it in and then if I click on this guy oh, let's see if I can get the diameter no i leave the i leave the act there that doesn't really matter because i suppose that's a wire okay so there's some of our dimensions done in our plan some of our dimensions done in our elevation i'm going to put in a couple more now but i'll do them in the end elevation annotation smart dimension they usually want between five and ten dimensions so now i'm going to dimension from this line here to this line click on that yeah pull it out this way once again, I'm going to get override the value. If you want to leave one decimal place, you can, and it could just say 164.2. I personally just prefer when there's none there. Make sure it's not in the nice in the center there. Okay, and then let's see if I can get the arc of this guy. Yep, radius 124. Click on that. Happy with that. And then maybe I could do the thickness. If you click on this, click on this, you can get this space in between the two of them. There we go. And you could do the bulb. You can see you can put in the radius for the bulb. Now, for the bulb, I'm not too focused on that. That's absolutely fine. Might do the radius at the back here. Click on this. Once again, I'm just going to get rid of that. All right. And that's pretty much, to me, given quite a good bit of information there. So I'm quite happy with that now. I'll pull that in just to make it look a little bit better. Okay. Obviously, it's up to you how you dimension uh, your bulb and what you think shows the most information. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, in this space here, we're going to pop in a little kind of parts list or a table. So, to do that, we're going to go to Annotation, and we're going to go over here to the right and click on the Tables uh, icon. And all we're going to do is we're going to click on General Table. Click on that. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy here. Just make sure, actually, sorry, I may have picked the wrong one. Is a fill of materials. Apologies. So... Annotation, so while it's done this, apologies, is a bill of materials. Uh, if I click on this, click on bill of materials, click on this guy, there we go. Uh, and hopefully, then when I click bomb stand, we're absolutely fine, except, except that, click the green arrow, and there it is, our table comes in. So, just to recap that again, I'll do that again. Annotation, tables, bill of materials, and then it's telling you to select it to this. So, I'm going to actually just select the pictorial view, click on this guy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the green arrow. And you'll see the table will come in. I'm going to put the table out here. And all I want there, I don't want the description column. So if I click on the arrow, see when I click on the C part here, click on that. If you right click on that and click on delete and just delete column, it'll pull it in. Now click on the little kind of crosshatch arrow here. I should say the up down arrows. And you can pull the table in. And I'm going to put the table in right there. Now, it's very easy then, if you want to edit any of these, okay, you can click on that, you can put everything into the center. I think that looks a little bit better. So click on the B, and then you can go left align, right align, center is usually the nicest. If you had more than one part, you can double click this, and you can up the value, okay? Absolutely fine. But everything is going to be referenced off my part numbers, but you can edit these tables. And, and also, if you wanted to create one, you absolutely could do that as well. So there's that little table there. Um, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to give it a little title. So I'm going to zoom in here. Let's pull that down a little bit. I'm going to give that a little title. And I'm going to go annotation, note, I'll type in, and bill of materials. That's possibly not a bill of materials. It's probably like a parts list more so. But I'll just put in that for now, okay? This is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so there's our bill of materials. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, okay, before we get into the exploded view down here, is I'm going to uh, start, um, what's the word, uh, sorry, uh, kind of highlighting what is what. So if I go to annotation, and actually it's drawing, I think. Is it annotation? So it's oh, sorry, it's in annotation, 
and I'm going to click on balloon. Now, if, while I have balloon selected, I can actually click on this, and what you'll see that it's going to be referenced off the table. So if I click on maybe this part, watch this, click and drag out. Number four is the gooseneck and plug. Perfect. If I click in here. Number three is the switch. If I click in here, that's the lamp base. Click on the bottom part, the base grip. One, two, three, four. What's number five? The lamp shade. There we have it. Okay, so there's the lamp shade. Now, I can't technically select the light bulb because I can't see it. So I'm going to press escape to deactivate. But I've labeled some of those. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our exploded view. So to do that, I'm going to go back to drawing. I'm going to select model view. I'm going to click on browse. And this time I'm going to browse from my exploded view. Click on this and click open. I'm going to bring it in out here first. Because all I'm really focused on, you'll see it comes in there like that. I don't want the side view. I want this kind of view here. Okay, and I'm going to go this direction. Okay, press escape to deactivate. I'm going to click on this guy, click delete, click yes. And now I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to click and hold and bring it in here. Oh, got the wrong thing there. Put that back in. Just like the right thing. Okay, now with that, I'm going to click on it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to up, uh, put it into color mode. Then I'm going to increase the scale. So I'm going to say maybe 1 is to 5. Let's see how... That looks, I might go even once to four. Let's see how it's, does it fit? Just about. Might go one is to 4.25. Maybe 4.5 actually. Okay, just working within the space that I have. And there we have one is to 4.5. And now at this point, I'll go back to my annotation, select balloon. I'll actually just put the little balloon in there. Now, it probably doesn't look as nice, but based on the one that I've previously chosen, that's it. But I want to annotate that. Annotation. And all I'm going to write in here is, caps on, exploded, view. Okay, and you can see we're filling up the sheet. Okay, now the last thing inside here, okay, we can put in these little um, kind of detail views. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to annotation, uh, sorry, drawing. We've done a section view. Now I'm going to do a detail view. Detail view is a very handy tool. So if I want to show some detail, if I click on detail, let's say I want to show detail of the switch. Okay. So with detail view selected, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, click once, and you'll see a little circle come in, click. And automatically, it's giving me an enlarged image of that. So look, I'm going to pop it in down here. There's a little detail view. Now the title will come in there, detail B. So I can actually... If I come over here and I click on, double click on the letter B, I can change that and I can say, type in switch. Now, it may not look as nice there, but I'll probably pop it out here, it probably looks a little better, but notice how it has changed over here from detail B to detail switch. And you can also then, you can increase the scale of this guy. So if I click on that, uh, it says two is to 2.25. Um, I'm gonna increase that to, uh, maybe two is to three is actually getting smaller. I'll say 2 is to 1.5. There we go. After making the switch a little bit bigger there, you can see this will kind of come in around it. There's our switch, and I'll pop in one more detail view then. So if I go annotation, sorry, drawing, detail view, and let's say I want to show some detail of, I'm just thinking here, you could do it off of this guy. Let's say I want to show some detail of the gooseneck. Pop it in there, pop it in there, there's the little gooseneck, now I'm going to increase the scale of that guy as well, I'm going to go 2 is to 1.5 again, there's there guys, now I'll pull this up, double click C, I'm going to change that to neck, pull that down there, and you'll see here it has changed to detail neck. Okay, and I think that fills the, the space appropriately. Um, and you can see there, I've kind of just shown that. Now, I can change this color on this. If I clicked on this and just went to the line diagram, I could go into that one. Or I could go into that display style without the edges. That's with edges visible. This one, without. Now, with edges, I think, looks, based on the image there, I think with edges probably looks a little bit more appropriate. Okay, that's obviously showing the curvature in the neck there. But there you have it, folks. 
Um, the only other thing that you could in, uh, include on this then is possibly some photo realistic images. And I have that done in another video on my um, on the YouTube channel under the section on SolidWorks. Okay, um, for yeah, for SolidWorks inside there. But essentially, that would be um, a drawing sheet completed. Okay, and that, uh, all that we've got in there, we've got our tree views, elevation, end elevation plan. We've got our section view. We've got our exploded view. We've got our pictorial view. Um, trying to pull this out here to switch yet. Yeah. Uh, our pictorial view, uh, we've got parts from this, we've got some detailed views, and we've done our annotations, and we've even edited some of our kind of uh, little section down here, and we brought in a crest. So quite a lot done there in that video, and you can see there, um, kind of, obviously the layout is up to you and how you kind of display your model, whatever you have made, okay? So there we have it, folks. That's the last video there done on the lamp. Um, I hope you found those videos helpful. Okay.